Hello everyone, in this video we are going to evaluate the integral from minus infinity into infinity of e to the minus ax squared minus b over x squared where a and b are positive constants. Um, I have done a video in the past on this same integral using a different method, but I just think this is a very cool integral. It's worth revisiting. Um, it's one that I first encountered as a first year undergraduate 10 years ago, and it's just kind of stuck in my mind um, since then. So I wanted to do another video on it. Now, the last time I discussed this integral, I did it using differentiation under the integral sign, which has become popularly known as Feynman's integration trick. In this video, we're going to use a more sort of traditional integration method, which is just a substitution, although the substitution to use is not obvious at all. So the first thing I'd like to do is just adjust the limits of integration using the symmetry of the integrand. So what I mean by that is the integrand only involves x via x squared, only depends on x via x squared, and so that is an even function of x. Now if you integrate an even function from minus infinity to infinity, that's the same as integrating from zero to infinity and just multiplying the whole thing by two, and so I can take a factor of two out and write it as the integral from zero to infinity of the same thing, e to the minus ax squared minus b over x squared. When we do our substitution later on, um, that's ch having changed our limits at this stage is just going to make it a little bit easier to work out the correct limits to use for our, our change of variable. So if you focus on the exponent, which is minus ax squared minus b over x squared, and just ignore the minus signs for the time being, um, that looks almost like a Gaussian integral but we have this second term over here, which makes things um, more difficult. So what we can, however, do is just consider ax squared plus b over x squared, right? So I've basically just taken out the minus sign. Um, we can complete the square, basically, on this expression. And in doing so, we can identify a variable that will transform this into a more Gaussian-looking integral. Now, the way to complete the square on this um, is, well, Firstly, we can just put our, our squared brackets. Um, your ax squared term, the only way you can get that from a squared bracket is by having a, well, a root of a, right? You need a root a, and then that's got to be times by x so that you get ax squared from that first term. You are also going to need a, similarly, a, a root b over x term to give you that b over x squared term when you expand your squared brackets. Now you can either put a plus or a minus in the middle of them. Um, I'm going to put a plus here for now, but then after we do this first step, we'll consider a little bit more carefully um, what's the best sign to use. If we choose the plus sign there, um, then the cross term when you expand your squared brackets is going to be root ax times root b over x times 2, which is 2 root ab. So we would have to subtract off this 2 root a b, and now we've got this in completed square form. So that suggests that we can make a change of variable um, from x to u, let's call it u, um, where u is the bracketed term, which is root a x plus root b over x, because then the exponent is just going to involve a minus u squared term, which is just a standard Gaussian integral. So now we've got to think a little bit more carefully about that issue with pluses and minuses that I mentioned earlier. And the way to decide what's the best thing to do is actually to look at a sketch of a graph of u against x. So if I just draw out some axes, we'll think about what u would look like as a function of x. We only have to consider positive x because I rewrote the limits of integration as just being zero to infinity. So we don't care about negative x from now on. So if you look at the equation that links together u and x, um, in fact, I'm just going to have to make a little bit more space so that we can do this sketch properly. Um, for small values of x, this second term root b over x dominates. And so your graph looks like a reciprocal graph, a one over x type graph. Um, whereas for large values of x, the first term dominates and it just looks like a linear graph. And so if I attempt to do a rough sketch of that, it would start by curving downwards like this, and then for large values of x, it would basically look like a straight line. Um, now we can start to see what the problem is, because if we try to come up with the correct limits to use in our transformed integral in terms of u, we're integrating from x uh, going from 0 up to infinity, but when x is 0, u is infinite up there, and when x is infinite, 
you also becomes infinite. And so your limits of integration, um, if you don't think carefully about it, you just end up putting from infinity to infinity. And the complication is that you've got this turning point down here. So to get around that, let's try changing the sign um, in our completed square expression up at the top. So instead of plus, I'm going to change that into a minus, which means we then have to change our two root AB um, into a plus. And then our U substitution um, that would go along with that would just be the same, but with a, with a minus sign. So now when X is large, you still, the curve still asymptotes to the same um, linear graph, right? But then when X is small, now your graph looks like a negative reciprocal. And so it would look something like negative reciprocal down here, and then it would just sort of tends towards the same straight line for large values of x. Now this is better because if you think about your limits of integration, now when x is zero, um, u goes to minus infinity when x is zero, and when x goes to positive infinity, u also goes to positive infinity. And because there's no turning point on this graph, we can safely just change the limits from uh, zero to infinity to um, minus infinity to plus infinity. So let's start writing our transformed integral. So as we've just uh, concluded, the new limits are just going to be minus infinity and plus infinity. Um, your integrand is going to be, you're going to get e to the minus u squared uh, minus 2 root ab because your exponent is the negative of that whole expression up at the top right that I've just circled. So everything changes into a minus sign. Um, we also, of course, have to change our dx into a du, and we're going to use that using the chain rule. So for now, I'm just going to write it as dx by du times du. You can imagine the du's cancelling. Um, and so by multiplying by the factor of dx by du, we have transformed to our new variable. Now, if you try to take the differential of both sides um, in our defining equation for u, you will run into problems. Um, you can try it out and see for yourself uh, if you would like. But basically, we need to invert that equation and get x in terms of u. And that makes it a lot easier to just differentiate both sides. So let's first make x the subject. We can do that by multiplying the whole thing by x and turning it into a quadratic equation, um, which will look like this, root a x squared minus ux. So we take that u term to the other side and then minus root b is equal to zero. Then you can just solve that using whatever method you like. We can just plug it into the quadratic formula, for example, and get x is u. Um, Let's put plus or minus here for the time being. So plus or minus the square root of, it'll be u squared um, minus 4 times root a times minus root b. So we're going to end up with uh, plus 4 root a b. And then the whole thing is going to be divided by 2 root a. Now, do I want the plus sign or the minus sign? Well, uh, we are only integrating over positive values of x, and so we can safely put the um, the positive sign there, right? The, if we had a negative sign, because u squared plus 4 root ab is bigger than u squared, the square root of that whole thing will be bigger than u, and so this would end up negative. So because we're integrating over positive x, we know that we want the plus sign there. So you can now take that equation for x in terms of u, take the differential of both sides and get dx in terms of du. But we can actually use another uh, symmetry trick to make our lives a lot easier. Let's just tidy up this integral a little bit and then um, we'll see what that trick is. So we can take the e to the minus two root a b factor out because that doesn't depend on u or on x. Um, so two e to the minus two root a b, integral from minus infinity to infinity of just e to the minus u squared dx by du, du. Now notice that e to the minus u squared, again, that is an even function of u. Um, dx by du in general, this is just, it's just some function. It, it's going to have an even part and an odd part. Now, because we're integrating over all values of u, um, any odd part of dx by du is going to integrate out to zero when we multiply it by e to the minus u squared and integrate over all values, right? That that just comes from symmetry. And so only the even part of dx by du is actually going to 
contribute a non-zero amount to our integral. Now, the derivative of an even function is odd, and the derivative of an odd function is even. And so if we only care about the even part of dx by du, that means we only care about the odd part of x as a function of u. Now, if you go back to this expression down here, which is x as a function of u, you've got um, this square root term, the square root of u squared plus 4 root ab over 2 root a, that is an even function of u because it just contains a u squared, whereas this u over 2 root a is odd. Okay, And so we can write down that the odd part of x as a function of u, so let's say x subscript odd is just u over 2 root a, which means, which implies that dx by du, the even part of that, will come from differentiating the odd part of x is just going to be a constant, which is 1 over 2 root a. And so that makes things very simple because we just substitute this 1 over 2 root a in place of dx by du over here, again because the odd part of the derivative is going to um, integrate out to, to 0. Um, the 2 in front of our integral will cancel with the 2 at the bottom of that fraction, you are therefore going to get e to the minus 2 root ab over root a, again root a coming from the denominator there, then your integral is just e to the minus u squared over all values, which is the standard Gaussian integral, which is the square root of pi, and then we just tidy things up a little bit, and we get e to the minus 2 um, root ab times the square root of pi over a, which is in perfect agreement with the expression that we got last time using differentiation under the integral sign. Um, this method is maybe conceptually a little bit harder in this case because you have to think very carefully about the limits and about the correct substitution to use. But anyway, that's it for this video. I'm not aware of any other methods to do this integral. If anyone else has any ideas, let me know and I can do yet another video. But let's leave it there for now and hope to see you again soon.